so what else, uh, other recommendation for all these new doctors that they want to come here to the US, yeah. other tips that they yeah. can do it? I think like the, the, the studying like part time is like the hardest. Mm -hmm. Like I remember like when I was, like mentally it was like tough, but like uh, it gets better after that. And uh, like some people like stretch the time out. So like the tool, they will take like five or six years to, to get done with like the assemblies. Mm -hmm. And like the more you stretch it, like the more like it will be like, like you'll suffer more. So if you just like, uh, like put a goal and, and like go for it and like the shorter time, and like it, it will like uh, be better for you. And also, like we forgot, um, like they can do some volunteering as well, yeah, like like extracurricular activities, like that can help as well in the CV. Some so like, how can they here in US, the doctors yeah. uh, <coughs> living in US, how they can apply or do any volunteer or service? So like I did some in like in, in hospitals where, where I was living. So you go to them and uh, like. Back then, like you're not certified, so you'll, you'll not do a medical thing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like you'll be like a reception or like showing like patients the way to. So like you'll be like part of the of the staff in the hospital, but not the medical staff by then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, but uh, but like, you're still like hospital related, so that's good. So yeah. here is what you did. You did something like that. Yeah, like I was I was volunteering in two hospitals, and like one I was a receptionist. Where here in the U.S. In, in the U.S. Yeah. Where. Uh, like where I was living. Oh yeah. Yeah, and the the, the other place I was I think like in the neurology department. Oh. So yeah, like you can help them and it's like hospital related, and also they can take courses like the BLS and ACLS. Like in the in the application, there's like uh, areas like takes for <coughs> BLS and ACLS. If you take it, like that will be a bonus. Like they'll give it to you during residency, but if you take it before, like that's a bonus to you. So you can go to one hospital and yeah. apply as a volunteer to help patients. Yeah. And so eso es importante, porque eso muchos no lo saben y es muy importante. Para tener cartas de recomendación, además eso le va al CV de ustedes, que usted ayudó a un hospital como voluntario, usted está haciendo sus exámenes, los terminó y necesita la otra parte importante para su currículum vital. Usted puede en un hospital, puede ser recomendado por alguien, pero usted también se puede presentar que usted es un doctor extranjero que está terminando sus exámenes y que necesita... Eh, algo de experiencia o algo para su CV y usted puede participar como voluntario. Obviamente usted no puede trabajar como doctor. Usted no es doctor todavía en Estados Unidos certificado, no puede hacer ningún tipo de examen físico ni tratamiento a ningún paciente mientras usted no sea certificado medical doctor en Estados Unidos. Pero sí puede hacer como hizo el Bayati, él fue a un hospital o a dos hospitales y trabajó como asistente, como recepcionista y estaba haciendo sus exámenes y así obtuvo un, un plus, o sea, esas personas en ese hospital le dieron una carta que él participó como voluntario. Eso es muy importante y es muy, muy buen visto durante el proceso de aplicación para la especialidad. Y además le da a usted la oportunidad de saber sobre eh, cómo trabaja, cómo es el sistema de salud de Estados Unidos, que es lo más difícil. Recuerden que ustedes vienen de otros países, son médicos en sus países, pero el sistema de salud funciona diferente. So, okay, any other advice? So, how is the... Um, How many hours per day do you yeah. recommend to study for, for example, for step one? How many hours? So, ¿cuántas hours? Yeah. Ahora, él estudió, obviamente, déjeme decirle, Alvayati es súper inteligente, ¿ok? No, Así que no. You're, you're super inteligente. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, how many hours do you recommend to study? So, like, you'll go through phases. Like, in the beginning, like, you'll be lazy. So, like, you'll do, like, like, I think, like, for a month or so, like, I was doing half a block a day. Mm -hmm. And like your mood will be so and so like in the be like in the beginning you'll be lazy that's fine, mm -hmm. but like once you get committed and like like two people day, and like like your job the whole day is to study like how many hours that depends like some are like morning people some are like night in the beginning like, I was like, studying in the morning then I changed to night, like some at home some other like library, but like the question like shouldn't be like how many hours but like. What what you get done in those hours, like we said, like in the like in the second round of your old, you have to get like two blocks done in the day. Mm -hmm. So you have to get those two blocks done. If you finish them by like six hours, like do whatever you want. But so when you say finish two blocks during the day, you say um, time mode or or study mode. Yeah, so study mode. Always timed. Or time mode. Like the second round. 
uh, other times. Ok, de eso vamos a hablar también de cómo hacer los bancos de preguntas. Como yo les voy a dar mi, uh, mi experiencia, porque exactamente, Alba ya te está diciendo de que llega un momento, o sea, cómo es el estudio, al inicio ustedes van a estar bien lentos y no se sientan mal por eso. Al inicio es súper lento, uno, por el idioma, segundo, por la complejidad de las preguntas, son bien complejas. Ya después que usted va aprendiendo en el proceso, pues va siendo más acelerado. Y es lo que dice que mínimo, mínimo diario tienen que hacer dos bloques y estudiarse todo ese contenido. So two blocks daily, all this, ¿no? Yeah, like that, that's in second round. In the first round, you'll be doing a block or less, but like you'll build up, build up speed as you go. And mm -hmm. uh, like first mm -hmm. round will be a system, second will be a random. So, um, one question: Are it important to do any um, assessment before the real exam? Of course. This is, okay, this is a common <laughs> question. This is, uh, ese es uno de los principales errores que cometen algunos de nuestros colegas y por eso no pasan el examen. Y son los assessment. So ahora Albayati nos va a hablar sobre esto. Uh, si es importante o no hacer assessment. Assessment son exámenes que te van a decir si puedes, cómo estás para el examen real. No hacer los assessment es un error. And Albayati, so how, how do you... Uh, Yeah, so, about assessment so like, never go to the exam without assessments, that's... Never. Nunca vayan a hacer los uh, steps sin hacer assessment. Y mucho menos si no los pasan. So, yeah. how many assessments do you recommend or what uh, assessment? Like, you can do like four, four to six assessments. Mm -hmm. And like, there's the MBMEs and there's the world assessments. So, you start with the MBMEs mm -hmm. and uh, like, don't do it super mm -hmm. early. So, like, after you finish, like, first round, And then you read the first aid cover to cover, or you can do like one assessment. But the first aid is really, it's a big book. I can't show you yeah. the book. Is, <laughs> are you say you read the book uh, in a month? I think like, like a month to a month and a half. It's difficult, people. Yeah. I will show you the book, but he, he read the uh, For me, it took more time. Right. Para mí tomó yeah. mucho más tiempo leerme ese libro. Es un libro bien <laughs> grueso. Tiene como 600 páginas, pero bueno, yeah. es la Biblia para estos exámenes. Ese tiene que saberse lo de memoria. Pueden estudiar de otros libros, pero ese, como dice Bayati, es la Biblia, igual que la Biblia es el, el banco de you War. Pueden hacer cualquier banco, pero esos dos no les pueden faltar. So, uh, do uh, assessments, so you, uh, MBME, and yeah. the UWAR assessment, no? Yeah, so, we said, like, first aid, like, and you are together, then you do assessment. Then, you, like, you finish half of the UWAR second round, you do assessment. Mm -hmm. You finish it, you do assessment. Like, uh, like you've done three by now, and, like, you can repeat the, the first aid after that. And, like, the closer you get to the exam, the, the more frequent. So, like, before the exam, you'll be doing them, like, a, an assessment every two weeks. So one assessment every two weeks? Yeah, like when weeks. you get like a month or a month and a half away from the exam. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can do an assessment like every two weeks. If you're like two weeks away from the exam, you can do like one every week. And leave the, the self-assessments like the last week or two. So use the MBMEs before. And before the exam, like your self-assessment one and two. And if one doctor, if they are studying and they didn't pass the assessment, do you recommend they can go to the test or not? So, like, if, if you fail on one assessment, like, do more. Two more. If, 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 like, two or three, you, you, like, you're, you're getting a bad score, then, like, you shouldn't. Mm -hmm. if, because, like, the forms are different. You may, like, score, like, bad on one and then good on another one. Mm -hmm. So, just take, take the average. The average. But... Uh, If you don't feel ready, if the marks are not good, like don't go because like uh, like your assembly is a one-time exam, and like the main thing is like step two. So if you get a low mark on step two, you cannot retake it. Oh. So just go when you're ready. Don't. Uh... Yes, eso es muy importante. Ir al examen cuando estén realmente preparados. No se apuren. Es mejor perder unos meses más a fallar el examen. Oiga, eh, pues de verdad que estamos súper contentos con que el doctor Albayati nos haya aceptado la invitación para estar con todos ustedes. Eh, dándole su experiencia, obviamente todo el mundo va a dar su experiencia, yo les voy a dar luego en persona la experiencia mía, quizás también recuerden que Albayati es una persona, está como decimos fuera de serie, bueno, now, um, can you share with us your uh, experience a month before the test, yeah. the day before and during the real test, uh, yeah. your experience, what are your principal recommendation? O sea, ¿cuáles yeah. son las recomendaciones para nosotros o para ustedes eh, yeah. qué hacer antes del examen, el día antes y durante el examen? 
Yeah, so like like the month or like two weeks before the test, mm -hmm. like you should be like doing uh, first aid, like going over first aid, and some yoga as well. Like two weeks like before the the exact the, the, the closer you're to the exam, like the more your anxiety is, mm -hmm. and like you, you'll be less productive. So like don't rely too much like on the last two weeks like uh, especially, and like you'll be doing uh, assessments along the way. So like. In the beginning, you'll be doing assessments like every two weeks, and then the closer you are, like if you're like two weeks away from the exam, you can do an assessment like every uh, like every week, like and the the week of the exam, like every three days, like you'll do an assessment, mm -hmm. and like leave the self assessment one and two, like uh, the last, like the the most uh, like predictive, and uh, yeah, like like try to do your best to just like shut off the like the anxiety. And just like focus on it, but like uh, like just do your best. That's it. O sea, eh, Mustafa dice que el mes antes del examen traten de hacer bastante assessment, todos los assessment que puedan, y eh, el, la semana antes hacer por lo menos uno cada dos o tres días, y principalmente los de U Word, los assessment de U Word los dejen para el final. Háganlos en vía en vía mí antes. Después les voy a explicar más detalle que son los assessment de vía mí para los que no saben. Y los assessment de u -Word antes del examen, la semana antes, o una semana antes. Uh, y dejar la ansiedad. Él lo dice que en su experiencia la ansiedad fue realmente, eh, es para todos. Los días antes del examen la ansiedad es muy alta y la productividad disminuye. So, on the, uh, during the test day, can you share your um, experience yeah. in the test day? What happened this day? How was it? Yeah. So, like, the day before the exam, uh, mm -hmm. like, Like people tell you like go to cinema or relax or do, go out, but just like depends on you, like like relax the way you like usually like do do stuff to relax, and uh, like I remember like I was trying like to read some stuff I was just like skipping pages and see, but like you, you wouldn't be doing much so like your goal at the, like the day before the test is just to like relax, and like you should keep a like a good like sleep like schedule, like two weeks before like just change like your sleep to be a morning person. And um, like on the on the day of the exam, like it's a it's a long long day, but like once you're in it, like you're focused on the exam, so you didn't feel it. Like it would pass by, and like you wouldn't feel it uh, that long. And uh, with step one, I think I was like I, I took like two or three blocks in the beginning. Then I was taking a, 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 like a break every block, and with step two, I was taking a, like a, a break every block, and. Uh, And I think like it's better to take short blocks, short breaks every block. Because like some people like do like half the exam, and then go on a on a long break and like have a like a heavy meal. But like don't do heavy meals. Just take snacks with you and like carbs. And like I was like getting like snacks every every break, and it will be like a short break. And like you can take all the breaks uh, like within the time. And. And yeah, and like, and what do you feel when you finish your uh, two thousand uh, question? No, it's like around three hundred. No, no, the step one, the step one, seven blocks for question. Yeah, is the two hundred seventy? You know. I think like one is less than two of this. Okay, that, yeah. so when you finish your test, your step one, yeah. can you share your feeling, your thoughts, what happened <laughs> this day when you finish the test? So like, uh, like you'll be so happy you finish, like they'll give you a paper, like a certificate of completion, <laughs> like you'll take a selfie with it, uh, and like, like uh, you'll be very happy that you finish, like you'll sleep, the, like the, the relief is like something else like to describe. Mm -hmm. And like the, the days after you'll be remembering stuff that you did wrong, and like, Like all you remember is the is the mistakes. Like that's how your brain puts it. <laughs> <the> yeah, best. but <laughs> but just like ignore it and. Uh, and you felt you you, you pass or. I, you I passed, yeah, and. Uh, yeah, I know. I, I knew you passed your <laughs> exam, but when you finish the step one, where's the the talks? You feel yeah. that you didn't pass the test. Oh, I like, failed the test. You'll be too dizzy to like to know how you did. Like there's so many questions. So like 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 you'll feel like you you failed, but that's just like normal. So just. But before ignore. you mention, uh, you was talking about some experimental question. Can you talk yeah. more about it? Yeah. So um, like uh, like 
every block, uh, so blocks have like... Escuchen bien esto, es importante, es un detalle que nada más lo van a escuchar acá con Albayati. Oigan esto, es importante para ustedes. Eso le va a disminuir la ansiedad a ustedes. Every block... Like, so blocks are like 40 questions, mm -hmm. and uh, 40 or 50. 40, 40 questions, 40 questions. Yeah, and like... 40 preguntas cada bloque, pero de esas preguntas... But like uh, like 25% of the exam is like experimental. So if you apply to the like block level, like around like 10 questions will be experimental from each block. And like these questions may be like difficult or new ones. So just like keep that in mind because like if you remember wrong questions and they were within the experimental, like they wouldn't grade you on it. So yeah, so just like keep that in mind. Eso es importante. De todas las preguntas, de las 270 preguntas que van a hacer en CK, un 25%, 20-25% son experimentales. O sea, no puntean, no les van a dar punto. Posiblemente, por eso es que sucede que algunos salen del examen y dicen, oh, las hice mal. Y pasa el examen. ¿Por qué? Porque quizás las que hizo mal o las que sintió difíciles fueron las preguntas experimentales. Eso es importante. O sea, usted va a tratar de hacerlas todas bien porque usted no sabe cuál es experimental y cuál es real. Pero eso sucede y por eso también usted tiene la sensación de que el examen estuvo, eh, que usted lo desaprobó y sin embargo pasa el examen. Porque un 20, un 25% son experimentales. Aproximadamente de las 40 preguntas de cada bloque, 8 a 10 preguntas pueden ser experimentales. Y eso es importante que usted lo sepa. Eso aplica a los exámenes de enfermería también. Al Entrix también tiene preguntas experimentales que no puntean. Y puede ser que en esa fue la que usted se equivocó. O sea, eso es importante que lo sepa. Que hay preguntas experimentales que son las que quizás... Ellos están probando con usted el nivel de complejidad para después ponerla en futuros exámenes. I think it's 50 questions. Like it's been a while since 50. I did it. I think it's 50. 50 total experimental? Yeah, like in, in, when we do you or it's 40, but I think it's, it's 50. Okay. We'll see. <laughs> no, no, the, the, uh, the, the test day, the real question, no, fourth question. 40. No, MBME is 50 question. MBME, yeah. no, yeah. no, no. MBME is 50 question per block. But yeah. the real exam is for a question. Okay, okay. No, no, no. Eh, ahora, um, Alba, ya te estaba diciéndome que el examen son 50 preguntas. No. Eh, las 50 preguntas son el MBMI. Cuando usted hace los examen de MBMI son 50 preguntas por bloque. Pero el examen real son 40 preguntas. Uh, so, déjeme decir algo también que no se lo había dicho. Alba, ya no solo es médico, o sea, que vino de GAC, cumplió su sueño, pasó sus exámenes con tremendos scores que después los va a, a publicar. Ahora no le voy a hacer mucho eh. Pero también él es artista, o sea, es editor, es músico. Come Acá on, estamos en, el, en el, su estudio, hoy estamos aquí en el estudio. Y entonces yo los quería invitar, él tiene un canal de YouTube, un canal de YouTube que es de, eh, o sea, donde él eh, compone y toca la guitarra, el piano. Entonces yo les voy a pedir de verdad, de corazón, a todos ustedes, porque él hoy se brindó, o sea, se, se brindó, yo eh, conversé con él y él aceptó la invitación para ayudarlos a todos ustedes. Entonces vamos a ayudarlo a él también a suscribirnos al canal de Albayati, porque también van a, a, a él le gustaría también que ustedes escuchen de su música. Entonces, bueno, los espero que se suscriban también al canal de Albayati, así también tienen comunicación con él. Es un doctor de acá de Estados Unidos que está haciendo su especialidad de internal medicine. Él vino de Irak, está acá en Estados Unidos con nosotros y es excelente compañero, amigo y doctor. Y yo le quería agradecer de verdad yeah. infinitamente por estar acá con <laughs> well, nosotros. You, y compartir. Thank you very much. Okay? Yeah. I appreciate your your times. No, I really uh, enjoyed this. Sharing your uh, all your yeah. uh, experience with all our uh, friends. So, aquí estamos. De todas formas, vamos a invitar más doctores. Quizá el Bayati esté con nosotros otra vez. Pero tenemos pensado invitar a otros compañeros que nos van a dar también eh, consejos, no solo de cómo convertirse en doctores aquí en Estados Unidos, sino también tenemos otros que fueron doctores en UK, en Inglaterra, y también nos pueden eh, eh, dar la experiencia por si alguno de ustedes quiere irse a Inglaterra en vez de venir a Estados Unidos. Ok, bueno, muchas gracias a todos, de verdad, les agradezco la, a, la asistencia y denle like al video si les gustó, compártanlo con compañeros de ustedes, quizás estas experiencias les puedan ayudar. Ok? Thank you. Sí.